A top focus is of course the Iran elections. Iranians vote for a new president today. This following Ibrahim Raisi's death in a helicopter crash, choosing from a tightly controlled group of four candidates loyal to the Supreme Leader. Shortly after polling stations opened, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei cast his vote. As ballots are counted manually, the final result is expected to be announced only in two days. The question now is, who will be Iran's pick? My name is Mohammad Ali Dost and I work in the private sector. I was unsatisfied with the current situation. I was not happy, so I came to vote. I don't expect too much of a change, but I wanted to vote for my favorite candidate. I don't think there would be a big change. My name is Badri and I'm a retired person. I came to vote because I'm interested in the future of my country, my own self, my family, my children. I definitely should vote for it. Now I'm in the queue. My legs have a problem, so I'm sitting outside for my turn to vote and hope to make a better future together for our country. I am Ali Abdullah Ali Zadeh, the chief of Mr. Pezeshkian's campaign. We are expecting by God's willing that Mr. Pezeshkian would be the next president and the winner of this competition with the definite vote of the people of Iran. The important issue for us is the legitimacy of these elections and up to now, by the grace of God, everything is going smoothly. As you're observing, it was a good campaign process of 15 days in which our society was informed our ideas, the candidates' ideas, and I also thank the national television for providing all range of programs for better public awareness. If Mr. Pezeshkin wins, then a lot of changes will be done in Iran which will be in accordance with our slogan of justice, transparency and rule of law. And in these regards, people of Iran should expect changes and also an improve in the standard of living of the people of Iran. Now, 80 candidates enter the race to be president. The Guardian Council approved six, barring all seven of the women candidates. And in the final stretch, two of them, both conservatives, have already dropped out. Amir Hussein Hashemi, who was the first to rescind his candidacy. Hashemi was one of Raisi's vice presidents, and he had campaigned on a continuation of the former president's policies. And as he pulled out, Hashemi urged other conservative candidates to offer a united front. Soon after, Tehran's mayor, Ali Reza Zakani, joined Hashemi and boarded the withdrawal wagon. Zakani had attempted to run for president in 2013 and 2017. It was only in 2021 that he received an approval from the Guardian Council only to withdraw his candidacy as he backed out yet again this time. Zakani also asked the two conservative candidates to unite and not leave the revolutionary forces' rightful demands unanswered. Now, emerging as the most significant of them is Mohammed Bakr Kalibaf. He has served as Speaker of Parliament since 2020. He boasts an extensive military history, including three years as commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, Air Force. The three other candidates have all been IRGC officials as well. But Kalibaf maintains close ties to the IRGC. He is known for his role in crackdowns on student protesters in Iran while serving as an IRGC general and later as the police chief. The second key contender is another conservative, Saeed Jalili. Though he served as the country's nuclear negotiator, Jalili is a critic of international negotiations over Iran's nuclear program. If elected, Jalili is expected to continue the harsh crackdown on anti-government protesters and on Iranian women accused of violating the country's mandatory hijab rules. Mustafa Pur Muhammadi is the only cleric in the race. Also a conservative, Pur Muhammadi had a leading role in the 1988 executions of thousands of political prisoners held in Iranian jails. Well, let's now look at the sole reformist in the race, Masood Pezeshkian. He has based his campaign around Iranian women, the youth and ethnic minorities. He has focused on reopening nuclear talks with the West. Analysts say allowing Pezeshkian to run could be an attempt to increase voter turnout. Now the question is, 
Will Iran's moderates turn out in favor of Pazeshkian or will they turn out at all? And our correspondent Anas Malik has sent us this exclusive report from Tehran. Listen in. I'm here in the Hosseinia Irshad. It's a very prominent city center polling station. You see scores of women, scores of men, scores of youngsters. They're here. And that is a testament on how uh, the voter turnout is turning out to be. I'll just walk around to give you a sense on how full uh, this area is. This, uh, the entire uh, complex has been made into a polling station. And you see, uh, there are women, there are men. Uh, and regardless of the gender, they're there to vote. They're here to vote. They're here uh, for what they believe would be a better future. I'll just walk out to give you a sense on how big the queue is as well, how many people are there outside waiting to get in uh, to the Hosseinia uh, Irshad uh, complex where we are right now. Uh, all across here in Tehran, it seems to be, uh, uh, the, the mood seems to be charged uh, in, the, in the wake of these uh, uh, elections, in the backdrop of these elections. Uh, I'll just ask my camera person to follow. You see the scores of women and men lined up outside uh, here. Uh, this gives you a sense of how, uh, how much this election means to the people of, uh, of Iran, of Tehran. Uh, the, the lines are, uh, get bigger bigger, longer, and longer. And we've just walked out uh, from one part of uh, uh, the Hosseinia Irshad to the other part, and we keep on walking. So you get a sense, uh, you do get a sense of how much, uh, how is the voter turnout, and what the people here really want. For all the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.